not fun or exciting like other time loop situations. It's quite depressing, welcome back to our channel, today we're gonna take a look at The Incident, 2014, a Mexican science fiction thriller film. The opening image depicts the ascending of a staircase. There is also a dying old bride holding a little red notebook laying on that staircase. And then, to get the action started Carlos returns home to find his brother Oliver under arrest by Detective Molina. The brothers act quickly and try to escape, running out of the apartment and down the stairs. Molina, not being able to catch up, shoots Carlos on the leg. Molina catches up with the brothers and intends to take them to his police car and drive them to the police station. A loud explosion is suddenly heard but it soon stops. This same loud noise of the explosion will be the catalyst to indicate another incident later on. The three characters start noticing something weird as it seems that the staircase is not reaching an end. Molina makes a full run of the staircase just to find himself returning at the starting point. The descending written numbers on the walls act as an indication to make things clearer to the viewer. The incident has officially started. To make things worse, all the exits are locked. The three men start arguing with each other, not believing that this situation can actually be happening. To add some more pressure, Carlos is hurt and in pain. He starts getting worse and worse. While trying to figure out what's going on or also take care of Carlos, Oliver and Molina grab some snacks from the vending machine and share some information about their personal lives. Oliver says that Molina didn't have to shoot Carlos and it was unnecessary. Molina defends himself by saying that it was like an invisible force got in him and made him do it. Carlos has been asleep but wakes up. He knows his condition and he feels like he is going to die real soon. He tells his brother Oliver that he has not enjoyed a single day from his own life and advises him to not make the same mistake and enjoy his own life. Carlos dies while at the same time Molina notices that the food in the vending machine reappears at its place. Oliver is angry about his brother's loss. He grabs Molina's gun and sticks it to Molina's face. The action jumps to a seemingly happy family which is getting ready to go on a six hours long road trip. Sandra is the mother of Daniel and Camilla and Roberto is their stepfather. Roberto is actually a good stepfather and is driving the family to visit Daniel's and Camilla's birth father. Before they get on the road, Sandra warns her children to grab their inhalers since they both have got asthma. The family gets on the road and after some happy moments Roberto stops the car at a gas station so Daniel and Camilla can visit the bathroom. Before Camilla goes into the bathroom, she gives her inhaler to Roberto for safekeeping. When Camilla comes out of the bathroom, Roberto has bought some lemon juice for her and hands it to the little one. Camilla takes a sip but Sandra quickly intervenes when she realizes that her daughter is drinking lemon juice. This might trigger an asthma attack. Indeed, while the family has gotten on the road again, Camilla has trouble breathing. At that time, the loud explosion is heard again. Sandra makes Roberto stop the car and give Camilla her inhaler. Roberto steps down from the vehicle but he drops Camilla's inhaler from his pocket right down on the floor. He accidentally steps upon it and breaks it. Sandra orders Daniel to give his inhaler to Camilla but unfortunately Daniel has forgotten to put his own inhaler in his bag. Camilla is having a hard time and Sandra is afraid that this might escalate. She makes Roberto turn the car around and drive back home. And so they do. But now they have been trapped in their own loop. The road is endless and soon they start realizing that they have been driving in circles. Roberto turns the car the other way but they always end up at the same spot. Roberto understands they have been trapped in this loop while Sandra is having a hard time accepting this situation. Meanwhile, Camilla has gotten worse and then she passes out. They make another try but again nothing. Roberto says that there is no way they can escape this loop through the road. He tells Sandra and Daniel to wait for him right there and then he makes a run through the fields. Sandra soon becomes impatient and she loses her cool. She takes the car and drives on the road again. She screams at herself. She is going crazy too soon. Daniel is sitting at the back seats, having his little sister laying on his knees. When Sandra slows the car down while rumbling with herself, Daniel gets the chance to drag himself and his sister out of the car. Sandra doesn't even realize it and she accelerates the car and drives away. In fact, Sandra has gone so crazy that she loops around the road and almost runs over her own children. Roberto comes out of the fields and sees Daniel and Camilla. He walks towards them and falls down on his knees asking for some water. Then he proclaims we're trapped. Seems like Roberto is right as the action takes us back to the staircase. The camera shows us around, the walls are full of notes and drawings, and the staircase has been filled with soda cans, which can be infinitely found in the vending machine. Isn't that a kid's dream or what? Many years have passed. We know because a reading on the wall says so and we can see that Molina has aged. A lot. He literally drags himself around. Oliver has aged as well but he was younger than Molina when the incident started. Oliver has created his own routine. He runs the stairs up and down, does pull-ups and push-ups, takes baths and keeps the place organized. He takes the reappearing contents of his backpack outside of it and organizes it in special places in the staircase. 
He has even created a pile of cash since the cash he had in his backpack reappears every day. After all that, he prays to his brother's skeleton which he has hung on the wall. Since the character's age, we can now be sure that these loops are loops of space and not time. Time seems to flow naturally and obey the well-known physics. By the way, did you notice that both stories suffered from the loss of a loved one? Bear with me as this did not happen by chance. Roberto and Daniel have also aged. They have created their own routines. Sandra is also alive but brain dead. Not doing much really. Roberto is a drunk who drives around. Daniel listens to music and walks up to the mountains where he disposes the never-ending reappearing inhalers of Camilla. The camera does not allow the viewer to see Daniel's face just yet and there is a reason for that. One morning, Roberto drives around while having Sandra in the passenger seat and he finds a teddy bear on the road. This used to be Fred, Camilla's favorite teddy bear. Roberto meets with Daniel. Now we are able to see that Daniel is actually Molina, the same Molina who arrested Oliver and Carlos in the beginning of everything. Roberto says that he had something important to tell him but he can't remember what. At the same time at the staircase, Oliver and Molina have created a routine to keep Molina's memory sharp. Oliver asks him stuff about his family and Molina answers with dates and facts. Later that night, Molina will have a serious breakthrough because he will be right at the last moments of his life. Sandra soon dies and Roberto drives after Daniel to catch up with him. They go to the fields. Roberto starts digging a grave so they can bury Sandra next to Camilla's grave. While digging, Roberto starts screaming. And here is where the explanation starts. The editing cuts back and forth as both Roberto and Molina start explaining what this loop is, to Daniel and Oliver respectively. Roberto falls down and tells Daniel that Camilla's death is his fault. Also, Camilla's death is the event that started this incident. Before he became Roberto, he was Ruben, a kid living another life. As a kid, Ruben was trapped into another incident on a raft with two more people. One of them was the owner and instructor of the raft who was supposed to help them get back into the land since he and his young friend got lost. The other one was, of course, his friend. The instructor accidentally injured Ruben's friend and he died later on. That started the raft incident for Ruben back then. Before he died, the instructor of the raft told Ruben that he had also been trapped in another incident before that raft. He had been trapped in an ever-driving train which never stopped. And now Roberto does the same thing. He is about to die and tells Daniel the truth. He tells Daniel to write his name down because he is going to forget it. And he also tells him to not get in the patrol car which is going to appear. Just before he dies, Roberto gives Daniel a little red notebook. Daniel buries Roberto and indeed is able to see a police car waiting for him on the road. He resists it for a day but then he is drawn at it and gets in it. In the car, he is able to find some stuff. A badge, a gun, a scissor and a red notebook. He opens the notebook. The notebook depicts his new life as Officer Molina. He is instantly hooked and drives away. Although the movie presents the two main incidents in a parallel manner, it has become apparent that they did not happen at the same time. The incident at the road loop happened first and the incident at the staircase happened next. So, back at the staircase. Molina who is essentially Daniel calls Oliver and tells him the truth about the loop, just like Roberto had done. Molina tells Oliver to write his name down because he is going to forget as soon as they finish this conversation. Oliver says he is not going to forget his own name. Molina says he is Daniel and this life he has lived as Molina is not real. His wife and family are not real. Everything is constructed. Molina tells him to write his name down because he is going to die as soon as he tells him the truth and won't be able to assist him furthermore. He goes on to explain that a human sacrifice must happen to start an incident and for them was Carlos' death. Whatever he has told Oliver about his family is not true because none of them are real. Molina says that they are trapped in those infinite hells to be used as fuel for their real selves. They are just a version of reality which is used to transmit energy to their real selves in the real world. Energy production and transmission happens by physical and emotional movement. He asks Oliver to help him and put an end to this. Molina furthermore explains that their younger selves present more potential than their older counterparts. This is because young people are able to enjoy life more easily and without having to have a reason to do so. But when people get older, they can't enjoy life because they stay trapped into their pasts. Molina warns Oliver to not get into the elevator. Oliver can't see an elevator yet but it will appear soon enough. And just before he dies, Molina takes the red notebook out of his pocket. Molina Daniel has done his part and he dies. Oliver can't easily accept what he just listened to. He walks up and down some stairs trying to put his mind together. The elevator appears and just like Daniel, Oliver is able to resist it at first. But then history repeats itself. Oliver presses the button and the elevator doors open. Oliver steps in the elevator where there is some stuff waiting for him. These are things which will accompany him in his new life. There is a name tag, a valet uniform and a red notebook. Oliver opens the notebook and in it he can see his new life depicted and described. He is instantly hooked, 
like all the others before him. He wears the red valet uniform and puts the name tag on his chest. He has now become Carl and he is ready to start another incident. The second one of his life. The elevator starts moving until it stops again. A newly married couple comes in the elevator and Carl holds the husband's backpack. They exchange some words and Carl introduces his new identity. When the elevator doors open, the couple steps out and Carl steps out after them. Carl is holding in his hands a little box which contains a bee in it. Carl drops the backpack on the floor. The husband asks him why he did that and Carl replies he is sorry. The husband goes on to pick up his bag and the bee stings his hand. He and his wife get concerned because as the bride reveals her husband is allergic to bees. Well, we all can imagine what happens next. Even if you can't imagine it, the ending image of the movie gives you a clear idea about it. The movie ends as it began. With the image of the ascending stairs and the almost dead old bride laying on them, indicating that incidents continue to happen after her own. The incident has brilliantly used the concept of repeating and looping not only in the storytelling part of it but also as a reference to the theory of literature, opening and closing the movie in a circle. And that was the movie, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.